pleasure of singing both things that you'd arranged, that you had uh, adapted, I guess I can say, yeah. uh, particularly those things that you arranged out of the storytelling traditions, yeah. and then things that you had composed. Now, those are three quite separate strains. For most yes. people, you get, a, you, get a, you get a composer, you get a conductor, you get a, a, an arranger, but bringing them all together, it sounds as if that's some of where you came from, that there wasn't yes. that kind of segregation of what you do. It, it was music. Yes. Um, actually, um, arranging was a very important thing for me because I, I, um, I graduated from university in 1976 and I composed, but the kind of music that I composed was so foreign to the musical language that was around at the time. Um, I remember the composer John Rutter, the, the English composer, who's been incredibly kind to me. He's 10 years older than me, but, and he was a graduate student at the same time. And he was writing, like, uh, like me, tunes in, uh, you know, uh, pieces with tunes and pieces with harmony. And people thought, what is this, you know? But, well, um, was it supposed to be all dissonant or something? Well, it was at the time. Uh. It was a very, actually, in some ways, it was a very exciting time. But I, I, um, for me, I, when I left Cambridge, I, I always loved jazz. So I was, I, and I played a bit at the time and, and I loved it. So I became an orchestrator and an arranger for the jazz orchestra that still existed in at the BBC and all the all the um, uh, broadcasting companies in Europe all had what they called radio orchestras big bands and string orchestra it was like a great big Hollywood orchestra actually yeah. and I loved it we get these these big uh, singers who would come from the States or or um, or from all over the world actually and conductors as well and they'd come and work with the orchestra and you'd have to you know write their charts and for me that was great I'd go to the studio and and you'd write it all out in pencil or actually when you were feeling confident you wrote it out in pen <laughs> yeah now couldn't do it now <laughs> there are people who do not understand what a chart is yeah uh, uh, it's a arrangement of a piece of music so yeah, it's a jazz term, yes, so they, they like a chart. Yes. It's, it's basically... Some the, of those guys don't read music, so yeah, this no, chart business is very important. Yes, because it's all, it's all you have to learn symbols, jazz symbols that people read from, a different type of, uh, uh, you know, chord symbols. That, but actually, ironically, you see, chord symbols were in Baroque music. And, and, you know, if you were a harpsichord player in Bach's time, you play from chord symbols. So you improvised. And, and so it's, in a sense, it's the same thing. And I, I loved, I loved doing that job because I would, I would write the arrangement and they'd say, we're recording it tomorrow. And so you, you drive, I drive it over to the, to, I was living in Wimbledon, just near the tennis courts at the time. And there was a, a copyist who, who lived kind of about five miles away and I'd drive it over there and he, he, say, right, I'll take it to the studio tomorrow. And that's what they did. And, and you would hear it um, recorded and you'd think, well, that wasn't so good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a learning yeah, experience. <laughs> exactly. I know I won't do that again. <laughs>